and then you said you took, was it the head and the hands? Mm -hmm. um, and um, when did you put that in? Well, there's a, th there's a three rule for bodies. I like to call it the three rule. Okay, tell me about that. Three days the body starts to stink. No, three hours rigor mortis sets in, the body stiffens. Three days the body starts to stink because of deep composition. Mm -hmm. Three weeks the body is starting to seriously decompose. Right, right. Three months, the body is unrecognizable. Three years, it turns into a skeleton. And may I ask how you know that? Welcome to ADMC Investigations. If you're new here, we put out videos every single week so make sure you subscribe. Check out our library. You're sure to find something that you've never seen before and hit that like button if you want. It surely does help. For early access and lots of exclusive content coming in 2024, have a look at our Patreon. We offer a free trial over there, so make sure you take advantage of that. The link is below. That being said, I would like to thank all of our members. You truly appreciate it. Okay, enough rambling. Let's get into it. February 27th, 2021, Grand Junction, Colorado. Warren Barnes, a 69-year-old homeless man who was a staple in the downtown Grand Junction community, was reported missing. It is a bit difficult to give much more of a premise to this case, as during the interrogation you'll see, the story really does unfold with the suspect's own words. The bottom line is, this was a random killing by a deranged teenager that just wanted to know what it felt like to kill. And he thought that by targeting a homeless person, the chances of getting caught would be reduced. Stay to the end is always for the conclusion and where this case is at now. This is the full police interrogation of Brian Cohey, but first, let us have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. And how did you get here? I murdered someone. Okay. To do my job, since you can't have a face card, we can go to the right for cover. Yeah. You want to look at the form with me? I know the basics. Okay. The rights. Yeah, that's what it is, but I got to go over a form with you just to make sure we both understand, okay? Yeah. So, can we go back over? I didn't quite understand the dates or what ended up to the body. You said you tried, but it didn't work out. Uh, can we just go back what do you want to know? So start back at the beginning and go slow and tell me as many details as you can remember. So, because I mean, I'm already going to jail for the 15 years probably. I have no idea. Because we're at the beginning. It's, <laughs> it's murder. I mean, I'm going to jail for okay. 20 probably. But, um, so I figure, why fight it? Okay. Um, so what's important to me is to learn as much about you and what you did and as I can. Well, as many details as you can give me, the better. I drive a 2007 Ford 500. Okay. And I keep a small 18-inch bat in there for self-defense. Okay. And a large kitchen knife in the deep glove box, both for self-defense, because uh, I don't really trust anyone or really any part of this town. So that's why I have both. And... Um, yeah, it was the night of February 27th. It was a full moon. And I figured, I can see so well, why not drive out? And uh, I am in a bad state of mind at that time. I am, I have major depressive disorder, so I am not thinking, shall I say, positively. Okay. And I am cruising around for an hour hour and a half. Um, so I fill up on gas halfway through and I'm eventually driving underneath the bridge near the sheriff's office. You know, like how... Can I? Oh yeah, go ahead. Thank you. And Brian, before you start, when you say you have a major depressive disorder, I'm just curious what those are. Well, actually I have several. I have high-functioning Asperger's. Okay. I have ADHD, uh -huh. a major depressive disorder. 
Okay. Major Express, who see you were wondering what made that last one is? Yeah, I know what they are. I was curious, yeah, if you, what the exact diagnosis was and, and who diagnosed them? Uh, it was Brenton Phillips from Lotus Counseling. He, um, this Brent Phillips from which counseling? Lotus Counseling. It was, I want to say, years ago. Okay. And, uh, he said, looks like you have major depressive disorder. I could be wrong. He could have not formally diagnosed me, but that's what he told me I have. Mm -hmm. So that's why I know why. Okay. So let's just say this is the office, right? And this is the parking lot. Take a turn. And here is the bridge. That one. And it was right here. Okay. So the bridge right here on Graham? Yeah. What? The one... I'm bad with I'm bad with words. I'm just yeah. By the way, I'm a habitual leg shaker. Me too. <laughs> Can I get the password for your phone? They just want it. It's, it's a it is a drawing code, okay? Yeah. Put it on there and I'll send them a picture. Or just put a big one down there and I'll uh, send them a picture to be able to see it. Or you can do it on the wall if you want. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You said people who have committed crimes like me, do we stay in this county jail or are we moved? It all depends on what the judge says. Um, you start off here. Okay. So, uh... Right there. Yeah, then you go do 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 do. Brian, from here? Yeah. Do where did you go to school? I've uh, went to Broadway Elementary School just across from my dad's house. Then I went to uh, Brooklyn Middle School. Right. I did Fruit of Monument High School. Well, actually, before FMHS, it went to Fruit of Monument Eight Nine. Uh huh. Right. Then FMHS. Uh -huh. Then I was transferred to R Five. Oh, okay. Did you finish out at R Five? I did. Did you? Graduated last year. Good for you. Okay. You. Do you work? Yeah. Where do you work at? Um, not even part time. I was gonna say part time, not even as a bagger slash courtesy clerk for Safeway. Okay. I work anywhere from two to four days a week. Oh, okay. Which which Safeway? The one right past the bridge near this location. Uh, yeah, right oh, over here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Pete, are you... So we were at the bridge? Uh, yes, I was at the bridge. I was cruising. So, yeah, I was... There's a road underneath, right? Uh -huh. That's under the overpass. And I was driving along, and I see a shape here on the railway track. So I'm like, oh, interesting. So I go up, and as I'm looking, I see a large thing wrapped in a canvas. Okay. And I'm like, that's a homeless person. So I grab my knife. I put on three layers of gloves because plastic gloves can be trailer users because they're so thin, those final gloves, mm -hmm. by imprinting your fingerprints through. So I put on two, three on one hand, I took the knife, I pulled back the canvas, and I stabbed his neck. Okay. He was panicking at first in his old man voice. He was in his 50s. I know why I, know why I call him old man. He was saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why? Ah! And I just kept on stabbing his neck. I was... Is it okay if I do a demonstration? Oh, yeah. This is him. I was straddled on top of him like this. Okay. And uh, he couldn't fight back. It was actually surprisingly easy. I was barely breaking the sweat. I thought, oh, this guy, he's going to be tough. But no, it was actually surprisingly easy. And during the time, I was growling and making animalistic noises. <laughs> what, why were you doing that? I suppose it was a frenzy. Okay. I was so excited, so rushed up on adrenaline and I okay. was just, woo -hoo -hoo. And um, I paused and he said, why are you doing this? 
and I and I said I've been wanting to do this for a long fucking time, harder so much. And then I continued. The whole ordeal lasted about a minute, minute and a half. Okay. And I stabbed. And when I was finished stabbing him, he took out his last breath, a grunt, and his head was halfway cut off in stabs. I, all the while, no, actually, after I killed him, I just couldn't stop saying stinky, dirty, dirty, stinky, stinky. It wasn't. I wasn't smelling anything, but... Come on, you say that? I don't know. Okay. And, um... But you remember doing it, so... Yeah. I suppose it was just me speaking out my mind at that moment. It was a pouring out of mind. What are you worried about? I mean, this looks like it's pretty close to the road and stuff. Somebody seeing you well, or catching you? It was 11 p.m., okay. so not many were driving by. A few, well, it was behind the pillar. So, like, here's the road. Uh -huh. It was here. So people would only see a brief thing here and here. So were you worried about them seeing you? I was worried about one of them stopping. But what did you think would happen if somebody... Well, if they looked, well, it was quite dark under there, so they wouldn't have seen the guy unless okay. they looked. Um, they would have seen me holding a bloody 12-inch knife, okay. wearing gloves, and wearing a mask to conceal my identity, a face mask. Okay. So you weren't doing it for COVID, you were doing it to hide your face? Um, partially. Social distancing. <laughs> right. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, but no one stops. And I'm just like, huh, proves the bystander effect. I noticed you got a cut on your hand. Is that from... Oh, that was when I was doing gas, when I filled up. I mentioned uh, I filled up gas when I was driving around. Okay. I was driving around, I was on a quarter of a tank, so I filled up on gas. What happened was, because I don't want to be seen in a gas station with a knife poking out of my pocket. I put it in the car on the back seat floor. When I'm done with it, I try and grab it, but my hand slips and grabs the blade, and as I pick it up, it slices these two fingers. Okay. Like a lot of times if you're stabbing you like this, it'll slide. No, no, and they had a guard. Oh, okay. had a, it was one of those knives that was Where like... Where is it? Huh? The knife? Where is it? Yeah. My dad had it. Okay. He found it in my car. Um, and then, let's see, yeah, and then after that, I stripped his clothes, I cut open his belly to see his guts. They're really pink. <laughs> Sorry, that was morbid. Um, and uh, then I cut off his head. I gave him a Glasgow smile. What's that? A Joker smile. I, I destroyed his eyes by stabbing them. In. Okay. And then I cut off his hands. I put those in plastic Ziploc bags. And then I cut off his right arm at this joint okay. and at this joint. And then at this arm, I tried cutting it here, and then I tried cutting it here, but what happened was uh, I accidentally broke his bone. This one, it was poking out. Okay. And so I left that one here, partially cut, dismembered here, bone sticking out. And then I left his body there. And then I took the head, put it in a leftover pizza box from the dinner a few nights ago. And then I took the hands, put them in the back, drove home, hid the hands and head in my room, cleaned the knife, threw away the garbage with, with the blood on it, and then put the blood stained, wasn't stained, it had splatters on it. I put it in the dish, in the, um, the washing machine. What? What did you put in there? I put the outfit I murdered him in. in so you were wearing it? Yeah, at I was wearing it. Okay. In a, in the washing machine, put it on high speed so it would effectively remove the blood. Okay. Wash it twice. And then I tried going to sleep, but I was worried that because there was a hole in my gloves right here, I was worried that they would be able to obtain a partial print. Mm -hmm. So I figured, why not go all the way? I drove back in a different outfit, 
picked up his body, surprisingly heavy, um, put it in my trunk, and drove to the Blue Heron drop-off station. Okay. I parked, so it's like this, right? So let's say this is ground. The ramp is quite steep, and you need to have four-wheel drive to uh, pull out of it. Okay. And uh, my car did it. I thought, <clears throat> so I pulled in, I thought that I could um, drive out, though, because I put, it, I put it in reverse, A, so that it's easier to pull the body out, and B, because the back tires would provide propulsion to push up. Right. And I open the trunk, I take his body out, I put it in the water, and because I don't want fingerprints on a body, so I just try moving it with my shoes. Um, that works successfully. He goes out some part in the river and floats off. Okay. God knows where he is now. Would it be a he? He's dead. Still a he. Okay, yeah. God knows where he is now. I think my guess was that it would be discovered this morning or next morning. So i uh, keep an eye out for any river-related activity. Okay. Did you, so, let me back up just so I don't lose track of where my mind is. So you cut him open, did you cut his arms off, his hands off, all that, before you went home? Yeah, before I went home, I tossed the arm bits around. Like, I took the right arm bit, threw it out, okay. took the left arm bit, threw it out. So it's somewhere around that bridge? Yeah, but look in a, because I know crime scenes can be a very wide area. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to look in a five in a ten foot area. So like this is a zoom in. So here's the road. And here's where my car was parked. You're going his corpse is here. You're going to want a crime scene that's roughly to the railroad tracks, because they're right here, okay. underneath the bridge, to the railroad tracks, here, just to help your search. And this is the road? This is right here. This is that road. Is that? Huh? What's the name of that road? It goes to, like, underneath the bridge. bridge. Yeah, it's the road that comes on the back of the, are you talking about the road that goes back behind the jail? Um, I'm not quite sure. Or the it, one that goes across the river and to your house, to your mom's house. Do you mind sometime if I could show you that road? I'm really bad with streets. Or well, we could get you a map. Maybe I'm sure a uh, map would work. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I've got two clarifying questions anyway. And, um, Go ahead. Yeah, then, I get, yeah. then when I tried to inevitably try it out, yeah. my car didn't come out. From Blue Heron. Yeah, from Blue Heron. Yeah. My car was stuck. I tried putting it full throttle. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> My car didn't have four wheel drive. Ha ha ha, me. Okay. And so then I tried putting it in low gear. I'm trying everything at this point. Right, place. right. And it still doesn't come out. And then okay. it slides into the river. Oh! My car slides into the river, me inside. Oh. And so I'm there in a car quickly being flooded with water. Okay. It is the middle of February. It's cold. At night. Yeah. In the river that's almost freezing. Yes. I'm drenched. Ooh. <laughs> I almost died. So I'm able to climb out. Um, I don't see the body, so I'm, I assume it's traveled a bit. Okay. And I come up, and I'm sitting there. I need to act fast or else I'll die of hypothermia. I'm, a, yeah. I'm panicking a bit at this point. I'm going to be like, oh, this is what I'm going to be remembered for, dying of hypothermia in a botched attempt at hiding a body. And I'm just like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Right. So, I'm running, so I go up to the road. And I'm trying to find out a car. One doesn't come by for five minutes. Eventually it does. And it was an old high school friend. I don't know his last name. What's his first name? Keller. I'm sorry? K-E-L-L-R. Okay. You don't remember his first name? No, that's his first name. Oh, okay. I don't remember his last name. He's an old high school friend. He's blonde, tall, large in the middle. Um... Yeah, he's able to, those Samaritans, right, 
helped me call my parents to let them know my car is in the river. Okay. And um, this is at 2 a.m. And what did you tell your parents? I mean, you obviously, you know, got to tell them something, the car's in the river. Yeah. So what I say is, I feel like I need to get out. I often do. I feel like I need to get out and clear my thoughts. Have you ever felt that? Yes, absolutely. So let's say that I drive down to the Blue Heron Point and just park and just turn off the car and think. Okay. And uh, I tell them that I'm stupid and I park too low and that my car flies in the river. Okay. Did they believe you? Yes. Okay. So did the police. The police came too? Yes, they called the police because... They tried, after, while they were warming up, they tried five different tow truck companies. All of them said, oh, we're drivers off shift, or, oh, we don't have the proper equipment. So they called the police. So one of them told them to call the state patrol. They couldn't get the number from the state patrol, so they called 911. Okay. Uh, Then the police came. I didn't do a breathalyzer test because I wasn't drinking. Was it um, the police or the sheriff that came? It was the police. Okay. All right. I remember clearly they were in black or dark blue uniform. Sure, okay. And, and you weren't drinking? No, were you drinking? You were I not mean, drinking? No, I was on, I have never touched any substances. Okay, okay. okay. Um, and while we're in that area, do you take any medications for the I ADHD? Do. Okay. I take... Were you on regular amounts for that stuff? No, I was on nothing. Oh, didn't take any of that? No, okay. I only take the ADHD method and, um, Adderall, amphetamine, uh-huh. whatever it is. Right. I think it's amphetamine. Uh-huh. Um, when I have something to do, like work okay. or when I'm going out. Okay. All right. All right. Um, and so they took, the police came in. And they said, yeah, well, it's best if you just, so they called a guy who was going to come out. Okay. He isn't able to get it out because he's in the water in the dark feeling around. Right. And see the river's muddy. Right. So they just wait until... It's morning to pull it out. Oh, pull it out this morning. Yeah, however, what immediately caught the police's attention is the blood from the body was on the reverse bumper. See, I was so, see, I forgot to wipe it off. Oh. And I was so panicked that I wasn't thinking. And so when they pull it out, they immediately see blood on the bumper. And they're all thinking, we'd really like to get in this trunk. Fools. There is nothing in the trunk. Ah. Okay. And um, and that happened this morning? Uh, no, they noticed it last. They noticed it after I'd been sent home at 3 a.m. Okay. They noticed the blood. But, yeah, this morning they noticed more blood on the door handle, the other door handle, passenger one. Okay. Um, yeah, and also the multi-layered gloves in the car. I took them out and obviously my car went in there before I was able to throw them away. Sure. So, so did the cops talk to you guys about that this morning? Mm-hmm. Did the cops from the police department, did they talk to you about that this morning? No, I was not contacted. Oh. All they were gonna, all they were planning to do with me today is have to get my insurance information. Sure. And they were still curious about the blood. Did they ask you about that? No, because oh. they did not notice it while I was still there. So when you say they were curious about the blood, how do you know that they were curious? Because my parents told me. Oh. And they saw the blood too, oh. and they were curious. But I was, I said, I don't know where the blood came from. Oh. So I, did, I, was, I had no idea. They thought okay. maybe it was just cut, but obviously a cut doesn't produce that much blood. And they said maybe it was the recovering uh, abscess under my arm, but that's scabbed up. Okay. So they were just, very, they were, they didn't know what to believe this day because it's blood, it's sticky, it's sinewy, <laughs> but I can't name a source. So they were just a tiny bit curious. Yeah. Not a tiny bit, they were curious. Yeah. Go ahead, Pete, and then I can get one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the water, by the way. Sure. Do you need more? I will take another, please. You know, um, let me go get one, okay? And if you get what do we I think you printed some of these too. Oh, mind. okay. It was on Crosby. Crosby? Okay. And where's the I haven't tried oh, there's the railroad tracks right there? There's the sheriff's office. Like I said, you go up Bing right. and there's the road and it was on Crosby Avenue. It was on this side. 
Oh, on this side? I was on this side underneath the bridge. Okay. Where I did it. So, let me just pick a picture of it so I don't lose track of where I'm at here. That's okay. No, of course, it's a glare. Tell me, John. Thanks. That's all right. I hope I'm being cooperative. Oh, you're doing great. I'll take another one just to show no, you. So, you could have just walked over here. I could have. No use trying to deceive Paul. So if that's oh. north, that would be east, so it's more on the west side of Crosby. It is the west side. Okay. And you threw... What all did you throw while you were there? I mean, how many pieces am I looking for? There are two pieces of farm. This section and this section. Okay. Just in this general area. Okay. I, can't, I couldn't say where they are. Under Broadway at Crosby. Right over there. Yeah, by the uh, I don't know if these will help then. Oh, yes, yeah, no, no, thank you. Yeah, we already got it. We already got it. Thank okay. You. And um, and then the body, you know where Blue Heron is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was done there. Okay. Down the little ramp thing. Yeah, the little ramp. So, how about, so you talked about his arms, and you talked about his head. I guess you kept the head? Uh, yeah, it was in my room. The okay. closet. The body's of Blue Heron. What about, you said you took his clothes off of it? They're still there. Oh, I know his, in the there, crime scene. Did you crawl him or is, there's no, they're there. still there. It's just a pile of his sleeping things. His okay. Boots, his clothes. And they're on the back side of the... Uh, there where all the blood is. Hey, I'm just saying on the back side of the temple. I just want to make sure I have that. It's, so the arms and his clothes are near Crosby. Yeah, like this. Okay. Like, here's, here's Crosby Avenue, uh -huh. and here's the bridge. Here's the crime scene. Here's the railroad. The arms are around this area. Okay. Do you think behind he, the pillar. Do you think he threw them past the railroad? No. Or between these two? No, they're between those. Okay. And then you said you took, was it the head in the hand? Mm -hmm. um, and um, when did you put that in? Well, there's a, th there's a three rule for bodies. I like to call it the three rule. Okay, tell me about that. Three days the body starts to stink. No, three hours, rigor mortis sets in. The body stiffens. Three days the body starts to stink because of deep composition. Mm -hmm. Three weeks, the body is starting to seriously decompose. Right, right. Three months, the body is unrecognizable. Three years, it turns into a skeleton. And may I ask how you know that? I just, I've always had a fascination with forensics and with anatomy and physiology. That's something I made up. So that's something I... <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm inventing something, but that's what that's why I coined the three rule. You kind of remember it that way. Yeah. That's your way of remembering. Is it, it accurate? Well, somewhat, somewhat. So, so, yeah. So, what did you you have the head and the hand at yeah. your house? The head, I put because it was starting to stink. I was planning on throwing the head and hands away. Okay. Found the trash bag, and not in the kitchen trash. But they were both in trash bags. The head was in a trash bag. I tied up the trash bag. Hands, I put in a trash bag as well. They were in Ziploc bags. And I was go. I was planning. Do they sell empty paint buckets? Mm -hmm. I was planning to buy an empty paint bucket, put the head in it, seal it, and then I was going to throw it off in some ditch, like um. 340 Broadway, mm -hmm. that area, okay. where it would be hard to reach. And okay. the hands I would throw in a different spot, wherever. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I have it right. The head is inside of a trash bag. It was. Well, where is it now? In the kitchen sink. My parents searched through my room and they found the head and hands. Okay, and so are the head and the hands in the kitchen sink now? Last time I checked. Okay, so they're in the kitchen sink now. Because your parents put them there. But they were in my closet. Were in your closet. And, and what kind of what kind of trash bag? What exact kind of trash bag? White. White, like a kitchen one, or what? Like a kitchen. kitchen okay. One. White kitchen. One that you put in a trash can. Yeah. And then what about the hands? They were inside Ziplocs, you said. Both in the, it's in the same. They're both in a different trash bag. Okay, the white kitchen trash bag. Yes. But now they're in the kitchen sink. Yes. Okay. Um, Still in trash bags. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's the arms and the clothes, the head and the hands, and
and then the whole rest of the body you put in the river? God knows where it is now. Right, but it was put in there. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Pete, I, you you can keep going. I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify those things. I was just trying to cut this out real quick. Um, um, you know, Brian, I have to ask. A lot of people that we have talked with. Um, they're you know, silent. Well, or they're just not as well spoken as you are, to be honest with you. You're very articulate. You're very articulate. Nothing about with words. No, I actually think you're really articulate. And you you talked about you were just kind of in a bad space that night. It was, yes. Okay. Why were you in a bad space? I didn't take my medicine. Um, and plus, for years, I was wondering what murder would feel like because you read shit like Ted Bundy and the Zodiac, they all say murder is the best human in the world. So I'm like, I'm going to try that. Okay. So for some time I had been wondering when it would happen. I always knew I would be in this building, or that it was as a criminal or a police officer. Okay. Because I was planning to go in the military, go into Frederick. Okay. All right. And, uh... How long do you really, you know, honestly think you've been thinking about really at some point you wanted to know what murder felt like? A year. Okay. All right. And you said you've read books? I read books. I have a book on forensics. Okay. Did you read the book, the Ted Bundy book? No, I have not read okay. the Ted Bundy book. Okay. I just, I Probably have seen excerpts. Have you seen, like, you know, little comments from it or things like that? Um, I'm not sure what book you're talking about. The one you mentioned, the, the whole the, it's stuff about Ted Bundy, a lot has been written. No, it was on the internet. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. And, and Pete has studied him, too. Yeah. You, you know, so. so uh, crazy. Do you know who Ed Gain? No, Ed in California. Pretty good. Ed Camper. Yeah. Studied him? I know of him. He was. He won the He was a He was, he was a Goliath. He was six foot nine. Pounds. So can I ask you a question? Almost all those people did this for some sort of whether they had sex with the body or it was some sexual gratification in their mind. In criminology, there's different types of... I'm not a serial killer by no means. Um, but some serial killers, there's different types of them. There's organized, disorganized, visionary, missionary. I'm just wondering what, what gets you excited about doing it. Uh, well, I'm not really sexually attracted to it. Okay, all. I was just asking. It was um, it was just curiosity, more or less. Okay. And you talked about cutting the. Uh, I used to be a meat cutter. I know it's not easy. Just to cut off hands. Oh off. yeah, it was it was with the knife. I was just. So did you practice on anything else? No. How did you know how to do it? Um, no, I, I just went along as the process. The bones. I just pressed the blade down and went, okay. severed them at the ligaments. Okay. And how hard was it to do that? To no. get them actually? No. To particularly hard. Yeah. hard. I was just more frustrated that I broke okay. this bone. So if you hadn't got frustrated, what was your... I mean, it sounds like what you did, we know. Did you have a different plan? Um, Why were you the original? Because I always wanted to know what it felt like to cut up someone. Okay. So the arms was just... So why did you stop? Why did you stop? Because the arms were just, that's it. And that's all I wanted to know was, was like cutting off a limb. And I'm just like, okay. Okay. And you said you studied criminology and forensics and all that? I, not, not college study or school study. It's like a packing interest. I, I understand. But what, were you worried about like leaving evidence behind? Or oh, not? Totally. So tell me about that and what you did then. Well, I was figuring the police don't, this is not to be taken offense, but police, they don't seem to care as much about high risk individuals, homeless people, prostitutes, etc. So I was deliberately looking for someone who lived that type of life. Okay. And I found a homeless person and the original goal was just meet him there. But I was worried about the fibers on the outfit I was wearing that would be on his 
it's uh, clothes and stuff. So I deliberately messed up the clothes. Okay. Not cutting them up, just throwing them around. And I was worried about just um, how long it would take to find him because it's a somewhat traveled road. Eventually someone with the windows down, down is going to smell something off. Right. The police have a nose for that type of thing. They're trained to be able to identify the smell of a corpse. Um, so that's where the ripper idea came from because a ripper will wash away a lot of evidence. Rivers are quite tricky. And uh, obviously that was botched. So how long have you been planning or looking for someone to do this with before you found this guy? About a year. About a year? No, six months. So have you come close or seen somebody or chickened out or anything in the past? No. I mean, I was looking for a deliberately secluded place like that one. I wouldn't just go up in Clifton and find someone walking down the street and stab them. No, that's, that's too public. Everyone sees that. Well, have you looked like at the homeless places or anything in the past? I have, yes. I've been, it was, I would go on night drives often, okay. maybe once every two weeks. Now just peruse the streets. Okay. So before this guy, how close have you come in the past? Not at all. Not at all? You just drive around? And yeah, look, just try and find Is anybody interesting? And no. In your mind thought of a plan? Or? Well, occasionally when you see girls walking down the street, uh, I take a glance at them. Cause, uh, okay. It really is like Ed Kemper where half of me says, well, I'm, I'm quite inept with women. <laughs> I'm being honest, I'm no Casanova. But half of me says, I want to take that girl home and make her feel nice. And the other half of me, it's just like what Ed said, is I want to see what her head looks like on a stick. And so occasionally when I'm driving down the road, if I see someone that catches my eye, I'll just like... Uh, and it sounds like you thought a lot about the fibers and getting rid of the body. I don't know how sad. Were you worried about getting caught while you were doing it or before you did it? I was worried about afterwards because because for these past, for this past day, I want to say day and for this past day and a half, including this day, mm -hmm. I felt so anxious because not only is my car in the river, there's blood on it. There's body parts in my house. My parents like to look through my things occasionally. And when they see blood, and eventually when they're gonna get the news that a body was found in the river, that's very much circumstantial evidence that's pointing to me. So I was very much anxious these past days that I was eventually going to get caught. Okay. What did you think would happen if you got caught? Well, I figured my mother would have confronted me about it, but no, she was, she didn't even say it until, until the police arrived. Um, I thought the police would uh, handcuff me, but apparently I've been cooperational, so. Mm -hmm. um, Do you know who the person was that you killed? Uh, no. Uh, I took his wallet. I didn't look at it. I just picked it up, briefly scanned over it, and put it in my car. Apparently, it was worn. My mom told me this before she found out that the missing person was Warren Brown, born in 63. Okay. White. That's it. Okay. But where was, where was his wallet when you took it? In his stuff. At the... Here. Well... I, I haven't been there. Was it in, like on his person in his pants or was it, it was in his pants? It was in his pants. Okay. And when I was moving his pants around, I felt it, so I pulled it out. And I'm like, it's over here. Okay. What kind of wallet is it? Black. Black. Hard. Okay. It's not a soft wallet like what I have. But when my rock wallet is it's soft as leather. Mm -hmm. But it, it was almost rock hard, the wallet. Was it, do you happen to know, is it a bifold, which means two-way or a trifold? I think it was a trifold. Okay. 
and had his ID in it at that point? Did you see his ID? No, I didn't. Okay. Your mom told you. Yeah. Um, where did you put the wallet? My passenger seat. Okay. So we talked about the stuff there we're going to go look for. It's your mom's house in the sink, apparently. Oh, uh, yeah. The knife is where? My dad found it in the golf box. I don't know where it is. Okay. You don't find any blood or anything on it. I cleaned it. And then what else are we looking for? That's all. His shoes, where's the guy's shoes? All of his prolongings except for his wallet are right here. And his head in his hands. His head in his hands are at the house. Yeah. And what were you wearing? I was wearing a dark blue uh, jumper suit. Those things that the one piece zips up. Mm hmm Thing that um like why were you wearing that? Those things aren't very comfortable. Actually I think they're very comfortable. Okay. Any yeah. reason you were wearing a dark blue blue one piece jumper suit? Uh, well uh you know the movie Halloween, Michael Myers? Mm -hmm. He wears one of those, and for Halloween, um, last year, I bought that as a costume to find the mask in my room. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I, I just associated that piece of, that article of clothing with, uh, violence. Okay. That's why I was wearing it. That night? Yes. Okay. And then what else were you wearing that night? Brown, sh brown, thick shoes. We'll see them in my house. They are in the living room. So, you know, a brand. I'm sorry. No, know. I don't know the brand. All I know is that they're they're brown and wet because they have blood on them. Okay. Murder. So I, I put okay. them in the bathtub, soaked them, like washed. Think you got all the blood out? No, blood is hard to remove. Okay. So, and where are they? I'm sorry, just where they are. They're in the living room. Okay. Where in the living room? Behind the couch. Uh, it's a space behind the couch. It's like okay. a five feet by five feet by five feet. You'll okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you use luminol, you'll probably get them. Okay. Right. I it isn't too much disturbed. Well, what else were you wearing? That's it. Well, I was wearing a shirt underneath. It's one of those in the laundry pile. I don't know which one. You don't remember which one? Yeah. Oh, pants. The, the, jumper the, was, the jumper was the pants. Okay, no pants. The shirt underneath and the jumper. Okay, no pants on? And underwear, but. Okay. Oh, socks. Remember. Socks, I was wearing a pair of dirty socks. Were, did you wash those? Or? No, I didn't wash them. Where are they at? They're socks. Somewhere? Okay, how about your gloves? Throw them away. Throw them away. Where at? My mom's house. Like, okay in the in the square trash bin. Okay. You will see the bloody trash and the gloves. Okay. This inside or outside? Outside. Okay. Near the front door. Okay. How about were you wearing a hat? No. No hat. Mask? Face mask. Okay. Black. Is the one you have today or a different one? Huh? You have it today or a different one or it was in my car. Okay. That got flooded. Okay. Is it still in the car? Um, yeah. Or to the best of your knowledge? Yeah. Okay. So the the black mask and the wallet are in the car? Yes. The knife? Well, you, I think it's the wallet in the car. Okay. The knife you don't know, but your dad took it. I think the wallet my parents took as well. Okay. And then um, the jumpsuit, the shoes. Jumpsuits. Jumpsuits in the uh, dryer. Okay. So the jumpsuit's in the dryer. And that's what you washed a couple times? Then? Yes. All at your mom's house? Yes. Okay. What What all did you use to wash it? I put it in the washing machine, poured a lot of soap in it, put it on dirt removal, stain removal, extra wash, okay. and then I did that twice. Okay. And, and I missed one thing. I know you said that the, did you say the jumpsuit, you said it kind of reminded you of violence because it came from the Halloween movie? Yeah, it was a, um, it was a, it was a. 
haven't watched the movie, so I don't know which one you're talking about. The original. Oh, okay. All right. It was um, Karen the Brand. Um, yeah, it's a jumpsuit. What, okay. was, what was the question? I just wanted to know the movie, to clarify the movie, because I didn't, I haven't seen that. It's not my kind of movie, so I didn't. You haven't have seen Halloween. You that, know, I've seen parts of it a long time ago, probably a long time ago, but it's been a long time since I've seen that. So, sorry. Um, okay. Um, I have to ask, and I, I think you answered it, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, you said you've thought about doing this for the last six months a year. Yeah. Um, have you ever done it before? No. No. Okay. You got to ask, right? Yeah. How about animals? Have you practiced on anything? Yes. It's pretty big stuff. Tell me about that. Person. It was 2018 Halloween. Uh, a stray black cat had been coming around our house. Uh, this was before I moved into my mom's. This was at my dad's. Um, and and I was thinking about killing him. I then hid the body in a shoebox, and then I disposed in the trash and got away with it. Okay. That cat. Did you keep him for a while, like you did this guy, or? I kept it for three days. Then it started to stink. So we got the three days and it stinks? Well, also because bodies, bacteria starts to clothe the body after a day to three days, so. And when did you start thinking about killing people? Six months ago. So, how old are you? I turned 19 last month. So when thinking January, back... January, two months ago. Okay. Thinking back, it sounds like you killed a cat. Now. Well, actually, I was thinking of killing people during the cat, but I wasn't acting on it. Um, but I started seriously thinking about killing people a year ago. How about when you were 12? Did you think about killing people? No. So what in your life has changed or what in your mind has changed? To make I you don't know. Was it like something all of a sudden one day you woke up and thought I'll kill someone or was it a gradual? It was gradual, I think. So tell me about when those thoughts first started happening. Well, in high school, last year my parents found a kit I had been assembling. It had hammers, shovels, knives, um, or zip ties, duct tape, okay. uh, saw. That was meant for hurting people. Um, they found it though, and I had convinced them it was via other methods, for other methods, for other things. Like, okay. um, and it was an ultimatum where if I didn't throw it away, all that, um, they would call the police, and then I would have been arrested on charges of conspiracy. And, um, so yeah, and, um, that was last year, before Halloween. So what made you put that kit together? That was for nights like that. Okay. So back then you were thinking about doing that? Too. Yes. So that was $100 stone away. <laughs> How much was the knife you used this time? 20 that was the same one. The last one I got was very sharp and impressed me, so I bought the same one. Okay. Where'd you buy it? Safeway, my work. Oh. When? Like recently or a long time? Um, month, month ago. Okay. And then I did it. You said it's really sharp. I'm just curious what kind of Precision 8 inch. Uh, a good cook precision, 8 inch, 12 inch, I don't know which one, I think 8 inch. Like they just sell it on the shelf? Like a, um, it was in a package with the other kitchenware. Hmm. When you said, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, Pete. Um, I'm really curious when you talked about the hammer and the shovels and the knives and like the zip ties. I mean, what was kind of your plan then? That's a little bit different than you did this time. Oh, yeah. So what was the plan back then? The plan was to go find, because there's no prostitutes in Grand Junction, I don't think. Have you ever had any sex crimes? Yeah. yeah. There's not prostitutes like five of them standing alongside the road, but there's prostitutes in Grand Junction. 
yeah, the plan was to go with one of them and have them come with me. And then the plan was to subdue them and tie them up and then torture her. That would have been sexual in nature. This was just to see what it felt like. But that would have been sexual. So you thought about the sexual killing, but this one was just to see what killing felt. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So what made you not go back to the same plan and get, you know, if you kind of had that as a plan. Would I have been caught? Well, I don't know. My point is if you, your, your folks, your mom found your stuff, right? Yes. And got rid of it. Why didn't you go back to that plan? Why change plans? Too, too much risky. Oh. First time in a row, they'll be like, okay, that's really suspicious, but okay, we forgive you, don't do it again. Okay. Second time in a row, we're calling the police on you. Oh. I didn't want to do that again. Okay, fair Too enough. Risk. And so they didn't call the police? Uh, no, because I told the, I, they gave me an ultimatum, have them throw it all away or call the police. So I threw it all away because... Okay, so you just, you thought if you started rebuilding that plan, they'd find out? Yes. Okay. So that's right. where this plan came from. Okay, all right. Not really a plan, it was more, it was improvised, kind of. Not really planning, just if... Opportunity then, presented itself. Yes, opportunity. Yeah. Okay. If the opportunity, then X. Okay. If you had not been caught by your folks, what do you think you would have done next? With the kid. I don't know. With it. No, no. Let's let's talk about like today. If mm -hmm. if you would have been able to get rid of the head, and your your folks did not find it. Well, it depends. Okay. Would you guys have been able to uh, solve it if the body was down the river, the head and hands were missing, and there were no fingerprints or DNA? Well, we'd like to think so, but who knows? Right, who knows? Like we'd like, yeah, we'd love to think so, but so let's say we didn't solve it. What happens next? Then what would you have thought of to do next? Well, I had thought I would have been very careful because I would have been worried at any moment this could become a cold case and then it could be solved later on down the line. I was just to see what it felt like. And if I had gotten away with it, I would have just kept the secret to be brief. So... To see what it felt like. What did it feel like? It was intense. It was um, it was a rush of adrenaline. Okay. My whole body was shaking. Not like out of fear. It was like. So you were having that feeling before? Um. Yes. What? It um. It was. It was years ago. Um. Well, no, actually, it wasn't. It wasn't. Occasionally, I, uh, my thoughts get the better of me. And um, sometimes I, I don't know how to describe it. It isn't a panic attack. It's anything like that. I'll give you an example. I was, I was um, watching the video when all of a sudden I, get, I start going into existential thoughts. I get the feeling, I know that it isn't, but I get the feeling that there are eyes on the walls watching the eyes on the furniture. And I cover myself up. I'm like, oh, God, eyes. And I'm worried if I stick anything out from the bed, the blades will come up and chop it off. And I don't know. I know that's not going to happen, but I'm worried about that. Okay. So then I was... My whole body was shaking up and down. So it's like a fear adrenaline? Is that what you have on um, the eyes? Not really fear. Not, it was a thought that thought okay. of being And then killing the guy was the same? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't fear. It was just pure... What's the word? Um, Excitement, I suppose. Okay. Not excitement as in joy, just excitement as in increased heartbeat, mm -hmm. um, sweating, that type of thing. Okay, I'm doing jumps. Yeah. Although I wasn't breaking the sweat killing the guy. It was quite easy. Well, did you enjoy it or not enjoy it? Um, did I enjoy it? I 
don't know. Sort of neutral of the whole thing. I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't hate it. So, uh, I'm curious about the cutting him up, taking parts of him home. Have you ever thought about... Uh, so it sounds like you've had, like, Ted Bundy sex type stuff. The Ed Kemper just kill people because you want to kill somebody. Plus the sex stuff. So, um, how about Jeffrey Dahmer? It wasn't, really, it wasn't really inspired by it. It was just more... Well, I'm just trying to think of all the people like These people, people can do it. So can I. Can I use the restroom? Absolutely. I'll let you do that. I'll oh, wait here. Okay. I'll wait right here. I'll walk this way. Lost doors. What else? So, clearly we know what you did, right? Yeah. Uh, and you're here to help me. What else can you tell me? Not only help me with your case, which the more you can tell me about that, the better to help me. But like maybe somebody else is in school now or to help catch somebody else. Well, I mean, I, I don't know what's in your brain. I never will unless you tell me what's in your brain. I was uh, suicidal, I want to say, two years ago. Okay. And um, I... Uh, uh, let's see. I had expressed thoughts of killing myself to my therapist, Brett. And he said if I ever felt like that, that we, they were going to crisis mode. And um, I did feel like that eventually. So I was uh, taken to my Springs and offered, um, what was it like, um, and a stay for like eight days. Okay. Or I could uh, go back home, and I chose the back home option. Okay. And I'm not even okay, so. Yeah. How about anything else about killing people or your planning or, I mean, how long, it sounds like for quite a while you've been driving around thinking about it. That's how often you drive around. Uh, a week, every two weeks. For how long? Oh, um, I want to say two months. Okay. I was caught doing it before, and so they didn't let me go anywhere, really. Because oh, caught My parents. Oh, okay. My parents caught me. They didn't really want me going anywhere. Okay. So I didn't do that for a while. Then about two months ago, maybe three, I started doing it again. When did they catch you? Um, yeah, was with the kit. Oh, okay. They, caught, they didn't... She was driving around with the kit. No, actually, I was walking around with the okay. kit. Okay. Oh, well, actually, I was driving, but I had the kit, went out, searched a couple places, kind of walking around with the backpack in, in the kit. The backpack had the most stuff in it. Okay. And the kit, just trying to look for someone. Um, they caught me when I went back inside. My parents caught me. They didn't check the kit, the backpack. There, but they were like, what are you doing out? And I'm like, I'm getting a breath of fresh air. And they're like, okay. But um, it was a few days later when they found out what was in the kit. Okay. So I'm almost confrontational about it. Um, and yeah, I stopped doing it for a while there because of the risk. And then three months ago, you started driving around again? Yeah. But a new kit. Yeah, no, uh, well, a kid, you could call it, I guess. So it was just, it was just clubs and a knife. Okay, and a plan. Yeah, and a plan. Okay. Every time you drive around, you wear the same like, jumpsuit and stuff. Or no, I would occasionally wear other. I would not. I would sometimes wear other clothes. But yeah, for the most part, the jumpsuit was reserved for an occasion like that. So if you found somebody. Yeah. Is it, to make you feel better, or to scare them, because you look like Mike Myers. The associated with us, I just only bought it because I was dressing up as Michael Myers at one uh -huh. Halloween. It wasn't because of Michael okay. Myers. It was um because it's so nondescript. Okay. It's just a suit. It's just a one piece suit. You know, it's um not any individual brand or anything like that, that anyone can identify. So it was just 
So to avoid getting caught, is that? Partially, yeah, because I didn't see any fiber. I mean, there's probably fiber spilling off of it, but I didn't think there was maybe anything that could come off of it. So, what? So you went home, took that off, washed all that. Did you like take a shower, do anything that way? Did you have blood on you? I had blood on me. I washed my hands. You know, I was thoroughly. And. Was your mom home when no. you were doing all this? No, no, she was at my dad's house. I made sure to never do anything that was disquieting. Okay. Um, with her around, it was always her at her dad's house, at my dad's house, and then I do that. So any idea, like a time of night when you started looking for this person? Uh, the, the, that night of the murder? Yeah. It was 10 p.m. Okay. Uh, 9 30 10 p.m and i found the person that i found warren brown at 11. Okay. Uh, murdered him uh, got back home at tw about 12 because it was about 30 minutes 15 minutes i spent there mauling his body okay. and then uh and then i tried to go to sleep for an hour I was worried about it, so got dressed up in a different outfit, dumped his body at 1 a.m., failed that, got a car at soon after, and uh, yeah, lasted, then I went home at like 3. So before you found him, did you, like, did you work that day? or No, I did not work that day. Uh, because of the abscess on my arm, I was not working at all. Okay. That week because it was too painful. To okay. So had you decided that's what you were going to go look for? So you put on those clothes and started out, or something different? Part. And so when you first started looking for him, was that your intention? Like when you started? I don't know how else to ask. Um, that I was going to kill someone that night. Well, you were going to look for someone that night. Yeah, when I was, I was driving, I was always looking for someone. Okay. And you already had those clothes on, or something different? Uh, so wait, let's let's okay. let's restart a bit. So after I had, um, after I got the different clothes on, mm -hmm. the goal was to kill another person. Oh, okay. No, no, it wasn't. You, I, I'm oh, no, oh, oh, we're talking to the oh, Yeah, when you left your house at nine thirty, I know exactly where you two are missing here. When you left your house at nine thirty that night, you were in the blue clothes. Yes. You were heading out to go find somebody to murder. Um, if the opportunity arose. If the opportunity arose. Then you're saying when you went back home, you just got on different clothes because you had already washed the blue stuff. And then uh, when I got on the different clothes, that was to dispose of the body. Okay. Not to murder someone else. No. It was to dispose of the body. Yes. Okay. okay. And what clothes did you put on the second time? It was black skinny jeans, plain shirt, okay. and um, uh, a jacket. How about shoes? My nice shoes. Okay. Those are covering my behind the couch as well. Okay. Um, what kind of shoes are those? They look like these, but not yeah. worn down. Okay. Black nondescript. So anytime during that night, 9.30? Oh wait, then you get stuck in the mud. How did you get from there back to your house? I, when I was, because the water went into the car went into the water because mm -hmm. I couldn't pull up the hill. I was in it. I got out. I, I was drenched. It was cold. <laughs> I would have gotten hypothermia. I nearly died. Um, and I made my way up out of the parking lot into the road. And I was trying. I was waiting for someone that I could flag down. And uh, it uh, happened. It was an old friend, high school friend, Keller. Right. And um, they let me heat up in their car, and they let me call my parents. My parents showed up, called tow trucks. None of them were none of them were able to. And then the police came. And yeah, then okay. I was dropped. Let me follow up with that. Um, Keller, tell me about. So where did you know Keller from? R five or Fruita? Fruita. Okay. Um, have happen to remember his last name? No. And you said they. So who's they? Keller and his grandpa. I am assuming it was his grandpa. It was an older man that was driving your age. 
Um, what kind of car? White four door uh, SUV, I guess. I'm not sure what it was. Okay. I know that it was white. Is, is Keller your same age? I think he's a bit older. Okay. He's bigger. Paul you said you knew him from school. Do you happen to remember if he was up in years, down in years? He was the same year. Okay. So should have graduated. Did you graduate on time? Uh, yeah, I did. You graduated when you were supposed to graduate? Yes. So he should have graduated 2020 also, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, blonde hair, you said big guy? Yes. Okay. Okay. Taller than me. And you're pretty tall. How tall are you? 189 centimeters. Okay. Almost exactly six foot two and a half inches. Okay. 225 pounds. Okay. And trying to lose weight out at 240. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I had another follow-up question. Is that all right if I jump in now? Um, I know I asked you this, but I'm unclear. On, I'm apparently having a hard time remembering. Okay, you said there was a gentleman from the Lotus Brett Phillips, Ph.D. Yeah. Brett Phillips, Ph.D. from Lotus Counseling. Yes. Um, High-functioning Asperger's, ADHD, major depressive disorder. And right? I was tested. I mean, okay. there was another um, facility. The doctor's name was Kathleen. It's off of Grand. Okay. Um, they tested me for autism for formal diagnosis and okay. Asperger's, uh -huh. which is high functioning autism. Yep. And they also said that I was schizo something. That isn't me misremembering. They just said you have your schizo something, whether that be schizophrenia, schizoaffective, schizotypal, or schizoid disorder. They said I was I had something that was schizo. And who said that? The Kathleen. Schizoid, not the Kathleen. It was okay. um, it was some other staff member. You know what might help us? Would you be willing to sign a form so we can talk to them and see what it is? Uh, yeah, yeah. It uh, wasn't well, formal. Did. It wasn't formal that they said I was schizo. So it was just you. Well, how they have some kind of yeah. record of talking to you? And yeah. Thank you. They said they said something like you have symptoms of a schizo disorder. Okay. Which whichever one that was, I, I don't know. They didn't, spe they didn't yeah. specify which one. So okay. I was like, okay. So. Well, she's getting that form. Let me ask you this. So where I was getting was, so you leave your house, I'm assuming, at 9.30. Yeah. And you're already in the jumpsuit. Yeah. So between 9.30 and when you found the guy, did you stop anywhere? Yeah. Get gas? And I got a gas station out at a quarter tank. Okay, so where did you get gas? It was a shell right by here. The shell... It's right here. Right, right here. 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 And what time do you think you got gas? He did tell us that. I have that in here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I know. You told him that. Do you remember? Because you told me. 10 <clears throat> 15? Uh, it, was, it was sometime between 9 and 10 a.m. And I got it like 10 15, 10 30. Was it before or after you found the gas? Before. Okay. That was, I filled up so I could keep prowling. Or whatever you want to call it. Okay. I think you need several. You probably need the one, the Mr. Phillips. Yeah. It, how long ago was that? That was years ago, two or three years. Two or three years ago. Okay. Um, and when was it that you were tested recently for autism? It wasn't recently. It was oh. also years ago. I want to say two years ago. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm confused. You said something or... Yeah, the doctors, they did not specify. 
they said I had symptoms of a schizo disorder. Okay. Whether that be schizophrenia, schizoid disorder, schizotypal, right. anything schizo, they just said that. I don't know. Let's never formally diagnose with anything like that. Do you feel like you have that? I don't know. Possible to tell. Self-diagnosing is foolish. Yeah. But do you, you know, schizophrenia is pretty Extreme. clear because people I don't have recognize those. they have a different personality in there. I don't have, um, I don't have any hallucinations. Okay. I have, I had have delusions, I guess. Okay. Like years ago, I thought I was obsessed with people staring at me. Okay. Like I felt people watching me from every window. The birds were looking at me, watching me. Okay. For greater purpose. That was a delusion, I suppose. Okay, right. But you don't have times where you feel like another personality is in your body? Like, no, that, that's... You remember all this. That's, no, that's that's dissociative identity disorder. Right. Schizophrenia is... Well, you, you have multiple people talking to you at the same time, kind of a thing. Um, no, no one was talking to me. I mean, I've spoken to somebody who was diagnosed schizophrenia, so I, I, we had a conversation about it. It was, wasn't, it was schizo. Something. Uh, yeah, they just thought you might, but yeah. they did not diagnose. Okay. Do you want to go over these? Go for it. So, my name is this way. Uh, here. What this is the form so I can talk to the doctors and get your records to see what they said. Yeah. So, if you want to read that. If you agree to let me do that, that's fine. And since I don't really know the names of your doctors, if you just we'll have to do a couple of there's two different doctors, but put their name. I don't know their names. That's too long ago. You'd have to ask. Them. Oh, I thought you just told her what the is Kathleen something. Was that Mind Spring? No, I can't remember the name. I could show you the address on the map. Do you remember the name of the place? I could show you it on a map. Okay. Find my map again. This is a nice pen. Make sure you read it because I don't want you to sign it. For you as well. Yeah, no, it's uh, a line that says health and criminal prosecution. Right. As long as you need to get your medical records or psychological records. Uh, I, so, did you read it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, sure, Is that sorry. Okay? Dates March 1st, we get to the date. Yeah. Should I sign that? Let me just put over on the side self. That's for us, like um, if you were a child and your mom. So was one of the mind springs? Mind springs, I was sent as an option. I was briefly there maybe for, okay. for the people a that few hours. The people that told you your, uh, like Asperger's, who's that? Like, I don't know their name. I can show you on the map. Is it, and then the schizo... They were the same people that did okay. the test. That's what I was just going to ask. How many forms do you need? So let's look at the map. Yeah. 
You don't have to give it to me, by the way. I'm just asking if you will. So if you will, put those in your mouth and swab it around. Rub your cheeks. You can hold them together. I need both of them, so. I'm going to my office, you want me to. In my thing is a scale. So I can take pictures of it. Oh, yes, I will go get your scale. Thank you. Oh, okay. I do have a very quick question. Um, I'm very curious. How do you feel about all this now? I mean, the next 15 years of my life, book set in stone, prison. Um, <laughs> If I go back that night, I probably wouldn't have done it. Knowing that, knowing what it felt like, knowing how this will all turn out, I wouldn't have done it. Well, what did you think it was going to feel like? What did you, you know, you said you were curious. What did you think it was going to feel like? I thought it would be the best feeling in the world. Okay. And it just, you said you didn't feel much of anything. Um, excitement. Oh, that's right. Okay. But other than that, no. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. That's just curious. Thank you. Be right back. Have you... I just want to make sure Have you parked your car and got out, or you saw him from your car and then got out? Parked my car. I saw him from my car. I parked my car. Got out. Got down the road. Soft shape here. Parked my car, got out, saw him here, okay. got my stuff, the knives and the gloves, and then... Did he see you? No, he was not woken up until I pulled the sheets back. Did he... So, I know this is going to be really fast, you pulled sheets back. And he... before you stabbed him, did he see you? No. And I pulled the sheets back, I get on him, oh. I got knee and then stab him, and then he wakes up and he's, what are you doing? What are you okay. doing? Get out of me. And I think you stabbed him anywhere besides that. I know you said the neck a lot of times. How many times do you think? Did you count? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was going until he stopped. Okay, how many? Just your best idea how many times? 30 or 40. Okay. Uh, and said the neck, besides cutting his arms off. Well, actually... It was a general assault. I was mainly targeting his neck because that was okay. the most vulnerable area. I was stabbing his head anywhere in that general area. I stabbed his head multiple times. How about his chest, his stomach? His chest, I stabbed once through the ribs. Which hand were you using? Right hand. It was his right ribs, and I just went. I sliced open his belly, carved up his leg. Not like I, I made several slices at his leg. Why did you do that? I was just doing everything I thought of at the moment. So let's talk about before you were sure he was dead. Well, did you stab him before he was dead? No worry about the head and neck. Okay. When did you stab him in the chest? After he perished. Okay, and how did you know he perished? He let out a final gasp. Okay. And he, uh, he, was, he wasn't fighting later on. He was losing too much energy, blood loss. Okay. And he just finally gasped, and I needed to make sure peace of mind, so I decapitated him, partially as for the hell of it. So let's try to go step by step. He said he stabbed him in the neck and the head while he was alive. Yes, I paused. We had a conversation where he said, why are you doing this? And I said, I felt like doing this for a long time. I continued. He, he uh, died, deceased, whatever you want to call it. And then I, de and then I stabbed his ribs, opened up his belly, Sliced his leg multiple times. Okay. Um, he wrote him and then decapitated him, removed his hands, his joints. Did you derobe him before or after you opened his after, belly? After I opened his belly. So you cut through his clothes to open No, I lifted up his shirt and just. Okay. Which way did you go? Uh, I'm like a deer this way or like this way? No, this way across his body. Okay. He was so very, you didn't see his heart or anything? No, he was very thin. Okay. I thought about taking that. What else do you think he saw is? What do you, I think, what do I Internally, think? what did you see? I saw his liver, 
its large and small intestine, and that's it. Heart. Some of it was yellow. I was thinking about taking out his heart. I was thinking about crushing the ribs and okay. disemboweling him entirely. Okay. Did you disembowel him at all, or just cut him open? I cut him open, but his organs spilled out by themselves when I was dumping him. Oh, yeah, okay. Did you take anything besides his head? Like anything internally? No. Okay. And how did you know it was his liver? I mean, you ever go hunting, or how do you know it's somebody's liver when you open them up? It's dark, pur purple, brownish. Okay. It's large up here. I just knew it was a liver. I've taken anatomy and physiology, okay. so I knew it was his liver. That makes sense. I was just curious if you've never seen one before, or you're just guessing, or how do you know? I've seen some. So, it's me. Two things. I think he came with, oh, yeah. Yeah. The form. Um, oh, it's, it's for your hands. Yeah. <laughs> so we can do it. We'll finish all the forms. How do we do your hands? So, I know you talked about um, your phone, or at least somewhere you Google searched something. We'd like to look at your phone. And do you have a computer at home? I do. Is it yours? It's family owned, but I'm the one who uses it. Oh, okay. Well, is it a desktop or a laptop? It's a desktop. Okay. Well, kind of, is it your mom's or dad's? I don't know. You don't know where it is? No, I don't know who owns it. Oh. Oh, no. Is that my mom's? Yeah, your mom's. Sorry, I thought you asked that's who okay. owned it. Oh, okay. That's okay. Um, and you use it. Yes. Um, have, have you looked up some of this stuff we've talked about? I think we, you talked about looking some of things up or on the internet. Do you use the computer? Yes. Or the phone? Both. So, there's another form, if you wouldn't mind. I just need to get pictures of since you do have cuts on your hands, and you said you... I was trying to pick me up the knife wrong. <laughs> and was it before or after you killed the guy? Before. Okay. So, why? Do you want me to hold it? No, sorry. Okay. I just sit him on the table. I'll right? use his hands there. It does help. Your right hand, did you say? Yes, ma'am. You used your right hand, and I did. Flip that one up like this. Like that. That worked. And uh, also held him down partially with my left hand. Okay. And then hold it down like that so I can see that cut. Oh, okay. Probably goes like that. And you said you cut some other fingers. Well, let's see. Um, well, this one okay. and this one, that was the only one that worked. Well, maybe do this again, because I'm not sure I got those. I just don't want to mess up. I'm oh, sorry for the shake. I'm going to push it by help. Hold on, let's look at this hand and make sure that you... What's this on this finger? This one? Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Do you think you could have done that night or is it just something else? Something else. I'll get your problem so I don't chant it. Oh, hold that, hold that finger out, but I just put thumb in the picture so they know which hand I'm taking a picture of. Hello. Uh, there, right there. Hey Pete, there's somebody outside, they're going to help you with those forms, if you could address them quickly, that would be great. Address them? Yes, with your forms. All these ones? Yeah. Okay. Brian, may I continue to talk with you? Is that okay? Sure. How you doing? Okay. Okay? I'm usually okay. Okay. Um, What do we need to know about you that we haven't asked? I'd love to think we think of everything, but we don't. What do you need to know? I don't know. What do we need to know about you that we haven't asked? I was planning to become, I was planning to go into the military. Okay. Planning to go into forensics or nursing and uh, eventually become a 
go to law enforcement. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. How come go? How come go to forensics and then to law enforcement? Forensics helps with the law enforcement degree. Plus, okay. military service also helps. It does help. What were you going to do in the military? Probably going to the Air Force. Were you to do what? <laughs> you don't know. You just like the Air Force. So, easy French physically. <laughs> um, I heard that. reputation that all the smartest people go in. Not sure. even if I'm smart. It's just. Well, I'm going to guess you were pretty smart. Have you ever had an IQ test? Um, not um, a full one. When they were testing me and they said I was kids or something, that whole affair. Right. They gave me a weird IQ test. It didn't test me as a score and tested aspects. I got really, really high on one or two. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, just do again. Um, I asked him if, what it is about him we need to know that we haven't asked, and then I got sidetracked on IQ testing. Um, so they, it wasn't a number, it was just kind of... Yeah, it was... I don't even know what they were testing for, what, which one that I got high on. It was it was oh. a weird test. They didn't even give me a score. How weird. Okay. Well, I want to read fun. Did you... Yeah. Did you like any of those, any of the like, therapists or people? Did you find any of them... Did you like them? It was interesting. Brett Phillips was a little too, um, sorry to get put him. He was a little bit too left wing. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Okay. Um, and what about the others? They were fine. Okay. What year did you transfer? What school year did you transfer from Fruita to Arpa? Well, grade three, yeah. 2019. Um, so, not your senior year, uh, junior year? Yeah, 11th grade. Okay. Okay. So, I don't know, because evidently you guys already talked about the gas station. I don't know. Did you guys talk about everywhere you went that night, before and after you found him? This is before. How long did you drive around? Where all this Too many went? places. I went down to the area around the airport with all the hotels. Okay. I went. Oh, I went. Did you go buy a Coke anywhere? Or no. Just no keep way. driving? Or I just anything? kept driving. Okay. Waiting for a Telltale sign. Anywhere else? So the hotel area? Um, uh, Main Street a couple times. Okay. Uh, the area around Main Street, uh, Whitman Park, around that area. Okay. Anywhere? Did you get out of the car anywhere else besides the gas? And no. Gun? Nowhere else. Did you have your phone with you that night? Um, first part I did. Because um, it, um, the first part I did, including murder, I had my phone on me. I was using it to find places like I didn't know where they were, so I would use it to go exactly find where that hotel area was. Because I don't know where it is. Okay. So and what did you? How did you find it? How did I find what? Like, how did you use your phone to find an area? GPS. Okay. You just like type something in. Yeah, I looked at a location. So what kind of locations were you looking for? Uh, areas sort of not residential where people where homeless people would be sleeping. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Is that how you found that area where yeah. you found him? Yeah, it was secluded and um, it was by the train tracks. I know homeless people like to be there. Okay. Did you take any pictures that night? Yes, but I deleted them. Okay. Entirely. Where did you take the picture of him? Um, after I killed him, I took a picture of him, okay. his hands, but I deleted all those because those are evidence. Okay. I don't know if you can find them. But when you say you deleted them entirely, that's an interesting statement. What do you mean by that? I removed them from my phone, deleted the pictures. Okay. okay. Do you have like a web thing that your pictures go to, like no. photos or something? No, they just they're just they're deleted. Okay. Were they there? They were, yes. On a web thing? On, no, on my phone. Okay. I understand that. I just, so like mine, I can delete them on my phone, but they still end up going somewhere else. No. Okay. Anything else you can think of we should look for? Did you tell anybody about what you did before today? No. I haven't told anyone that I committed murder. Okay. Nobody like a web thing or something? Nowhere. Okay. Did I, I don't know. Did you tell your parents? You said they kind of confronted you when you saw that. Did you give them details about all of this? The murder? Yeah. I didn't tell them either. 
Oh, because they confronted you, right? Uh, no, they, they only confronted me when the police arrived. Oh. They acted like nothing was wrong. Oh, really? Yeah, until the police arrived. <laughs> okay, well, since the head was no longer in your closet, it was in the kitchen sink. It you knew the gig was up, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just waiting. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. What else do you want us to know? This is probably our one chance to get to talk to you. I don't know. Yep, I don't know. Yeah. What else do you want to know? Anything you want to talk about? What happened or what you remember? Or do you think anybody saw you? I mean, maybe a few people saw me standing behind there, but after the murder was committed, whenever someone we drive by, I would hide behind here. here. Okay. Anybody drive by while you were doing that? Oh, yes. Yeah. A few people, but I wouldn't be able to identify their car, them, anything. Would they have been able to see what you were doing? No, I think it would have been too secluded. They, could, they, they couldn't see the body. They could only see maybe my little leg okay. at best. Okay. And just to confirm, you said... You took the hands, you took the head, you got both arms off and threw them. Did the legs stay attached? The legs stay attached. Okay. All right. And that went with the body down the river? Yeah. Okay. And the wallet you took? Any other personal items you took home or somewhere else? No. Okay. No trophy things? That what the wallet was? Um, yeah. Okay. I was planning to maybe keep a finger. Okay. You haven't got that far yet. No. Okay. Why a finger? That's small. Not that much space. It won't sell that much. Makes sense. You could keep. Yeah. Well, let us step out and figure out what, where we're going next, okay? Okay. Be right back. Where will I be staying? We're going to be staying here for a while, but we're going to figure out all the... Okay. Yeah, you'll be here, but hold on just a minute, okay? We're going to figure all that out. Okay. Still in here? Yeah. Me too. Oh, you want that for a map? Oh. Do you want me to redraw it? Well, I was going to take a picture of it, but... Oh, okay, sorry. That's okay. That's all right. You're right. You're right. Um, so here's what here's what I think is going to happen in, in Pete's double checking. But so you're going to go here, you're you're going to go to our jail here, and then we will go further. We have to, we have to do a bunch of paper a bunch of paperwork has to be done. But, but you have you have to go to jail now. You can understand that from our yes. position. Okay, all right. So that's what we're going to do. Unless you have something else. Okay. Uh, were any of the clothes you're wearing now were you wearing that day? No. Okay. Anything? Your phone's not on yet? Anything like that? No, they took Where's your phone? Oh, they took, they took it. my phone. Okay. Yeah. I wish I had my phone. <laughs> well, why do you wish you had your phone? Something to do. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you have your parents' phone number and stuff you can call from the jail? Uh, yeah. You know that? You know them? I do know Okay, okay. Um, well, we'll go around some... Right? Well, we can do it. I don't care. They used the bathroom one last time. Of oh, course, of course. I'll take you. Okay, yeah, I won't. And I'll meet you out there. There was a memorial built in honor of Warren Barnes, as he was known by many in the community to feed the birds and sit and read novels nearly every single day. They say it never took Warren more than a day to read any given book. As Brian Cohey thought it would be a lot less likely for him to get caught committing murder against a homeless person, he picked one that was very well known and that still had ties with his family. There was immediately noticed that Warren was missing and one of the reasons Brian was caught so quickly. In January of 2022, Brian Coey pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity and court proceedings were halted so that he could undergo a state evaluation. Eventually, he was deemed competent to stand trial. And on February 3rd, 2023, 
After about two days of deliberation, a jury found Brian Cohe guilty of first degree murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 13 years, and he's currently serving his time in the Buena Vista Correctional Complex in Colorado. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.